right, so here's the scene I'm looking at. Couple challenges today. Number one, uh, the scene is in full light. There's not a lot of shadows to work with. And then also, uh, there, there's not a wide value range to work with either because there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, but I'm just gonna play around and see what happens. All right, I'm working over an old 11 by 14 inch panel. And I've already blocked in the landmass here just to avoid confusion. I'm gonna try to keep the landmass at about a mid-tone value or higher maybe, uh, just so that there's, you know, some atmosphere. And I'm trying to keep the shape simple. I think it's always good to compose with simple shapes, but especially when you're painting on a small panel. All right, I'm gonna darken the sky a little bit here too. So yeah, already thinking about having a narrow value range. Even though I'm gonna keep the value range fairly narrow, I still want there to be vitality in the painting. So I'm hoping by having a, a strong arrangement of shapes, um, I'll be able to create some energy. Also down here, maybe some thicker paint where the waves are breaking against the rocks. All right, I've squeezed out two piles of titanium white. On the right, I have Winsor & Newton's Artist Oil Colors. This is the expensive paint. And then I have uh, Winton, which is Winsor & Newton's student grade paint. Uh, this one is about $30 a tube, and this is $20 a tube, so we'll see if there's a difference. All right, Winsor & Newton artist grade color here with some uh, cadmium yellow medium. This is as bright as I can get. High quality paint, fairly saturated, and then I'm gonna key the rest of the painting off of this off of this value. All right, I wanna start adding some warmth here. And I may end up lightening these values a little bit, we'll see. Okay, and then the lightest portion of the rocks kind of come down like this. So I've got titanium white and then a little of this other mixture. Going with my limited palette as usual, titanium white with five colors. Cadmium yellow medium, lizard and crimson, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna, and phthalo blue. All right, this portion of the rocks here has some more blue in it. It's almost leaning towards green. So I've just added to this mixture here. I've been doing that a lot more lately where I'm just working into existing piles of paint and just modifying them in whatever direction they need to go. So important to focus on shapes. If you get the shapes right, there's so much leeway with what you can do within the shapes. So if you're trying to paint looser, having a strong design, meaning a strong arrangement of shapes, will allow you to just let go and have fun within those shapes. As long as you keep the value range within each given shape narrow enough that you don't break it up. All right, I've got my typical dark mixture here of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but I've mixed in a little bit of titanium white because I don't want my darks to be too dark. There's sort of a cave here and then some random dark spots along the water line. If I was painting over a new panel, I would be trying to have these dark passages uh, be transparent, but I'm not worried about that because I'm not going for high contrast today. So having a lighter dark is actually just what I want. There's some rocks in the distance here and I wanna make sure that I keep the value light enough uh, that it pushes them back and then also suggests the moisture in the air or the atmosphere. In order to accurately judge the values, I have to stand back. All right, so I added titanium white to the mix. As I've mentioned in previous videos, one of the things that always happens to me is I think I'm painting the distant rocks or distant hills light enough then I get it inside and it's much darker uh, than I had hoped for. There are a few warm notes out here, but for the most part I want to, I do want to try to keep these distant rocks uh, fairly simple and not break up the, 
the shape too much. But suggesting a little bit of warmth, I think is, is gonna be okay. All right, for the distant white water, I'm going with some of the Winton titanium white, so the less expensive paint, and ultramarine blue. And I want there to be a difference between the distant white water and the white water in the foreground. I don't want this distant white water to be too bright because that'll bring it forward in the picture plane. All right, I'm painting in the distant water. There's a lot of wave activity today, and so the waves are breaking on the rocks, creating a lot of mist right around these rocks, but then out here, there's less. So it's bluer over here. I added some more ultramarine and a touch of phthalo. But I did use a straight edge for the horizon, but I'm trying to keep uh, that edge very soft. So I dragged the brush over it to blend the edge so it's not too sharp. A sharp edge will bring the horizon forward and again, I'm trying to push it back into the distance. Also trying to keep the value shift between the water and the fog fairly narrow. All right, there are bits of ice plant along the top of the cliff in the foreground. I'm first adding the dark portions and then I'll come across the top and maybe add some more saturated tones. All right, in real life, this area is light in value. It's the same value as this lighter portion here, but I don't want to draw the eye over to the edge, so I'm darkening it up a little bit, paying attention to the value structure overall of the whole of this rock in the foreground, trying to make sure that it remains intact. Okay, I'm gonna experiment adding more titanium white to these rocks. I still feel like they could be a little bit lighter. I have yet to paint distant rocks too light, always too dark, always. I'm using the inexpensive white paint, the Winton, uh, whenever I don't need a very high value. For something like this here, I'll use the uh, expensive paint, but for the mixes, the other paint is fine. I honestly can't even tell the difference between the two when I'm, you know, using it in a mix. Right above the fog, there's sort of some cerulean colored sky. And I'm not going with too much saturation here. I may add some saturated bits down in the water here but anything in the distance, I'm trying to keep desaturated. I feel like I want to lighten up the fog a little bit. So I'm adding some of the Winton titanium white directly to the painting. I decided to darken the water in the distance here just a little bit, especially over to the left. And I think the sky and water relationship is good. I think it's working. All right, so the sun is coming out. I'm losing the atmospheric effect. So I'm going to just wrap this up quickly, which is okay. I don't want to overwork it. I, I like these seascapes to feel spontaneous and energetic. Okay, I'm putting some warmer greens in the foreground here. I want these greens to be warmer than the ones in the distance, again, to create a sense of depth. Keeping the brush loaded, trying to make strokes with intention. All right, adding some thicker, lighter green passages. And I'll probably come on top of this with some of the brighter, uh, brighter whites. And I wanna leave some of the blue in there. Again, paying attention to the shapes. I don't want it to look too orderly, too t tidy. I want some chaos. Kind of chasing the light here, which I shouldn't do. Almost done. I've used a natural bristle number six through the whole painting, uh, but I used an older brush. Now I've got a new brush and I wanna soften the edge where the white water meets the rocks. I don't want that to be uh, too hard of an edge. The soft edge will suggest motion. All right, so here's what I finished up with. Uh, as I mentioned, the goal was to capture the atmosphere or the moisture in the atmosphere 
To be totally honest with you, I'm not crazy about this composition. I'm not crazy about this painting. When I do a painting that I'm not thrilled with, it really motivates me to get out and paint the next day. All right, so the next day I went out and I painted the painting to the left, which is a 16 by 20. Uh, I wanna show these two paintings together so you can see the difference in size. That's one of the things I did not like about the painting to the right. Um, is the size of the panel 11 by 14 in real life it doesn't have a lot of presence in the room um, and the fact that it's an atmospheric mood in the painting also you know there's reduced contrast so it just has very little visual impact in real life and so the painting to the left is larger and it's also a more zoomed in view so the viewer is closer to the action whereas the painting to the right is more of a distant view, which I think could work, but I think I would need a much larger canvas or panel, say like a 2430, something like that. All right, so this is something I've been thinking a lot about lately when composing, trying to remember when painting small to do a more zoomed in view and not a grand vista. Uh, so if I'm painting 11 by 14 or 12 by 16, um, try to do a more zoomed in view where the viewer is closer to the action, keep the shape simple, um, dynamics in the brushwork, push the color, that sort of thing. So if I'm going to do something that's more of a distant view and more atmospheric, I would do that on a larger panel or canvas. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it is much appreciated. So check it out. Other than that, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video.